Hello my friends, I'm working on a new project where I need to solder many PCBs, but soldering with a soldering iron will take me too much time. So I built my own hot plate for SMD soldering. I have based my design in other available designs online, but I went a step further to make the ultimate do-it-yourself hot plate. This hot plate is able to measure the PCB's temperature using an infrared temperature sensor, rather than a temperature sensor attached to the plate. It is able to follow any soldering temperature provides storage on a SD card, and thanks to a ESP32 microcontroller, we can also upload wirelessly any temperature curve we want to follow, as well as start the cycle wirelessly. So let's build and test the ultimate do-it-yourself hot plate. For this project we will need an old flat iron, one of 1500 watts will be more than enough, a ESP32 based microcontroller, a solid state relay, able to be triggered by the 3 volts of the microcontroller and supporting the max power of the iron, an infrared temperature sensor, I selected the MLX90614, able to handle temperatures up to 300 Celsius degrees, a power regulator to power the DC circuit, basically the microcontroller from the AC power source, some panel mounting LEDs for state indication, a push button in case that we want to use the hot plate without the need of a PC, a SD holder to storage and reflow curves, and an antenna, an easy way to attach the infrared sensor above our PCB, as well as move in any direction. Additionally, we will also need a box to safely mount our cold plate. In my case, I bought this cheap key holder that will make the job. First, I'm going to disassemble the iron. We will just need to remove some bolts to discard the components that are not necessary. In my case, I decided to stay with the hot plate and the protective plastic cover. This cover will be useful to limit the exposure of the heating element. Additionally, I will use the cables to make some connections. Once we have the iron, we can start installing all the components in the box. The box already looks amazing, but we need to mount all the electronics. The electrical connections are simple, but we have to safely install everything to ensure the durability. I'm going to separate the AC circuit from the DC circuit by installing the AC in the bottom of the box and the DC circuit in the top of cover. Both circuits will be connected by a small pin connector. The infrared temperature sensor has a I2C connection and the SD holder a SPI connection. 
LEDs and the button are connected to their own pins. Additionally, I added a mechanical switch to stop the current from the microcontroller, and because I love the sound of this type of switches. As I know that you don't like to see me soldering, here is the final layout. In the bottom part, there are the relay and the regulator, together with the hot plate. In the top cover, we have the microcontroller, the SD holder, the LEDs, the push button, and the mechanical switch. Both circuits are connected by a 3 pin connector. If we open fast the box, this connection is automatically disconnected. So let's move now to the code. I tried many algorithms to follow the reflow curves. The thermal inertia and the conductivity from the different materials involved was difficult to control. So I developed a simple algorithm that seems to make more or less the job. I didn't use a PID controller because I believe that it would have the same problems, but I'm open to suggestions and collaborations. Likewise, I discarded to control the hot plate with pulse width modulation, because it seems over complex to adapt the system to all the temperature curves I wanted. So basically, the algorithm takes a target temperature every 250 milliseconds from the SD card. If the target temperature is higher than the current temperature plus a compensation temperature, the relay is activated. If it is smaller, the relay is deactivated. The compensation temperature is a dynamic value that tries to avoid the peaks due to the slow temperature transmission and its inertia. Because once the relay is activated, even if we switch it off, the temperature will continue increasing for a while in many parts of the hot plate. So for instance, this compensation temperature will increase if the target temperature is higher than the current temperature and the relay is activated. Meanwhile, it will decrease if the current temperature is below the target temperature and the relay is deactivated. It seems twisted, but I'm happy with the performance. The SD management is based in our previous video about the ESP32 and the SD control via Wi-Fi and you can check the link in the description together with all the code developed for the project. But let's check the performance to show you how it really works. First, we are going to define a testing curve and a blood to the SD card. For this, we enter to the Wi-Fi connection generated by the hot plate and upload a TXT file with a list of target temperatures every 250 milliseconds. After, we can start the cycle wirelessly. Alternatively, we could also push the push button of the hot plate. As you can see, the hot plate fails to reproduce the fast change from one temperature step to the other. But this is the expected performance due to the temperature conductivity. Also, the compensation temperature changes over the cycle trying to avoid values above the target temperature. Another important thing is that without an active cooling system, the temperature will go down very slowly. So this is a possible improvement. I have seen other designs online suggesting that they manage to decrease the temperature fast after the reflow curves. But sorry, without an active cooling, that seems impossible. Let's try now a reflow curve with higher temperatures and without fast change. So as you see, it's not perfect, but it works. We can reproduce any reflow curve we have logged to the SD card, which is good if we change the soldering paste or we want to use the plate for other uses. Let's solder a PCB.
As you see, everything works. I may increase the peak temperature to 230 degrees in my original curve. But overall, I'm very happy with the results. We will use this incredible tool in the next project, so don't forget to subscribe and like this video. All the code, libraries, connection drawings and useful links are available in the description. See you in the next one!